My name is Matt McElrath, he, him, his pronouns, uh, Director of Student Services. This is my 12th year at Great River. I'm also a parent of a first grader and a fourth grader. Got a pre-K kid coming along. So this is my 12th year. I think I'll be here 17 more or so. Um, thinking about retirement after that. Um, I have worked with probably all of the students that have done PSEO in the last 12 years. And so there's probably uh, 100 students or so. And every one of those students I've had a, an individual and family meeting. So I'm happy to give information right now, kind of generically speaking, about how PSEO works in the Twin Cities and know that um, a follow-up meeting is pretty easy to do. Um, you know, I can talk for 20, 25 minutes tonight, but it's also true that I could probably tell you everything you really need to know about PSEO in about 20 to 25 minutes in an individual meeting and applications for PSEO are a pretty smooth process as well. So I'll say that by way of introduction. Um, so speaking about what uh, PSEO stands for post-secondary enrollment options, it's a program that's been around for a long time. Uh, in the Twin Cities, I would say more schools have it than not. Um, I would say our most popular programs are probably St. Paul College. Uh, one reason, it probably has the, the biggest course offerings, and it's also on the 3B bus line that runs from our school pretty much to the front door of St. Paul College. Another neighbor is Hamlin University. It's just an eight-minute walk over the train bridge. Um, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus is also pretty popular. We might have one or two students uh, attend there each year. It's probably the most competitive program and um, has the most steps in terms of applications. Other than that, a lot of families then choose PSEO uh, programs based on proximity to where they live. So we have families coming from half an hour to 60 minutes in almost all directions. So we have students that are doing like Century College, Normandale, uh, Anoka, Inver Hills, uh, schools kind of all over the place. And so speaking about what it is, uh, it's a program uh, for public and non-public students in 10th, 11th, and 12th grades to attend college and take college classes while they're still in high school. Um, through the whole program, while you're a PSEO student, you're still enrolled at Great River School. All the credits uh, transfer back, the grades transfer back. We put it on our transcript and you graduate from Great River School. Um, and probably the most important part of it is it's free tuition to you. And the way that it's free is um, normally if you're a full-time Great River student, all of your funding comes to us for, for us to pay for your education. Uh, as soon as you start taking PSEO classes, we kind of split your schedule. So if you take, for instance, one PSEO class at St. Paul College and the rest of your classes here, the funding that comes from the state just gets diverted that way, which is how it makes it free for you. Um, PSEO is intended uh, to give students greater access to the possibility of college education, especially those students who may not have a guidance counselor or college prep program at their high school. Um, I would say the two biggest reasons that I've worked with students wanting to do PSEO are one, uh, that they are interested in taking classes that we don't have here as a smaller charter school, where if you're looking for some very specific electives that you might see, you know, at Central or Roseville High School, but um, we as a smaller program just aren't able to offer those. Students are taking classes like that, um, especially if they're looking at St. Paul College. There's just a wide range of classes that are available. The other is students that are kind of feeling for a variety of reasons, oftentimes social, but it can be other things as well, that they're kind of just done with the high school experience. Um, those students might start pursuing PSEO as early as junior year. Um, and students can take just one PSEO class and the rest at Great River or be a full-time PSEO student uh, and PSEO students that are full-time kind of don't come to campus at Great River at all. Uh, usually they'll come maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter and schedule a meeting with me to kind of make sure we're tracking everything uh, with regard to credits to stay on track for graduation. And then also to do kind of any post-graduation college planning application process, those things. Uh, probably spoken to all the places that students uh, do PSEO. And again, I'll, I'll go through all of these slides and I'm happy to take kind of Q&A after this PSEO section is done. Um, with regard to who it's available to, I would say there's a little bit of a technicality here. Uh, it is open to 10th graders. Um, I don't know that we've had more than one 10th grader ever take PSEO classes. It's intended as it describes here to kind of say you could take an introductory class. Oftentimes it's almost like a study skills class. And if that goes well, you can take one other class. Not all PSEO programs uh, enroll for 10th graders. 
Um, I think one like specific exception is MCTC over in Minneapolis that does have like open enrollment for a lot of 10th graders. Happy to talk to families uh, about what's possible and not possible for 10th grade, but we'll say that almost everybody else that's ever done PSEO is um, an 11th or a 12th grade student. Something that I'm sure that uh, Lindsay will speak to as well here, but um, you know, one of the reasons that we do this info night is that this is kind of a decision that students are making at this juncture in their careers in 10th grade, um, knowing that our IB diploma program starts in 11th grade and that for most students, PSEO is an option starting in 11th grade. Um, I would tend to say that uh, with the IB program, it's something that you kind of need to start with a full commitment to begin with. And Lindsay, again, will talk what that looks like and who does that. I will say that for PSEO, in almost all cases, it's a semester by semester basis. Um, so if you don't want to do it on any given semester, of course, you don't need to. Um, but generally speaking, an application window for fall semester is open May and June of the spring before. And then if you're looking to apply for the spring semester, it's often a November, December window. And so it's kind of a semester by semester basis. I would say it's a very common experience that students might start out with the IB diploma program. Uh, pursue it for a semester, for a year, for a year and a half. And for those that don't continue and finish it all the way, some of them will pick up PSEO uh, later on down the line. Um, I'll say it here because the note is here. There is um, you know, a difference between what schedule looks like for a college student and for a Great River student. So a Great River student taking a, a standard uh, course schedule will take six classes. If you're taking the full IB diploma, uh, there's an additional class with theory of knowledge, um, but that's then a total of 12 credits for a standard year. Um, kind of a typical college student will take three or four, three, four or five credit classes as a full load. And so it's just a different schedule. Um, and so for that reason, it's a state law that any student that takes a semester class in PSEO gets a year's worth of credit uh, in high school. So even if you're taking kind of the same level of a class or potentially an even an easier class while students here are taking IB global politics, for instance, um, a student taking a PSEO class for a semester gets a year's worth of credit. So a typical schedule could look like three or four uh, college classes, no classes at Great River, but because of the double credit scenario, uh, you end up staying on track to graduate. It also means that you're kind of tracking a bit more like you would for a college student where you might take a social studies class in the fall, but no social studies class in the spring. Same for math, science, language arts. Uh, unlike in high school, you're kind of taking all of your core classes all of the time. So who's a good fit for PSEO? I've spoken to this a little bit. Um, and this again, depends on which kind of program you're looking to. Um, the University of Minnesota is probably the most competitive and rigorous one to get into. And uh, I would say more than half of our students that apply to that don't get into that program. I would say on the other hand, all students that apply to St. Paul College that meet the GPA minimum requirements almost always do get in as long as they get everything completed by the deadline. Um, so when it says things like seniors must be in the top half of their class, juniors in the top third, this is definitely on a case-by-case, -case, school by school basis. I would say, you know, if you're interested in PSEO, it's really easy to do the research, kind of pick any school. Again, I've mentioned St. Paul College, Hamlin University. Type that in with PSEO, and there will be a subpage that talks all about um, how it works, uh, eligibility requirements, application steps, kind of links to all the things that you need to do. Uh, whenever I'm meeting with a family, I just kind of say, pick a school, let's go to that site, let me walk you through it. Um, the first thing that I go to is just the, the application deadlines. For a lot of schools, there's a priority deadline that's often um, a couple of weeks to a month in advance of the final deadline. Um, and in terms of steps, again, I'll speak to it right here and probably again in a little bit. It might take one to two hours max to apply for PSEO. Um, almost all of the schools have a link to create an account to create an online application. I've almost never had to support a student doing that. It's kind of a lot of your demographic information, some of the credits that you've earned already, and some other information that students are able to do entirely independently. Uh, I print a transcript and can scan it. Uh, most PSEO applications are submitted via email. Uh, and then the one other piece is a standard like statewide form for PSEO where it's student and family fill out the top half, I fill out the bottom, scan it, and that form along with transcript and then this online application are what you need to submit by the deadline. 
maybe one or two exceptions are like the University of Minnesota, where you might need a letter of recommendation and a personal essay. But just about everywhere else, those are the steps um, and process. And so um, I will say PSEO changed a lot during COVID, uh, I think, as everybody was kind of stuck uh, with distance learning. And they said, well, gosh, I can take kind of any class that I want to from my bedroom. Why don't I take PSEO and get some college credit for it? So I think statewide, um, this isn't the case necessarily at Great River. I wouldn't say much changed, but statewide, a ton more students pursued PSEO and applications got much more competitive and almost all the programs raised their GPA requirements and kind of said, that's the threshold. We're not really looking at any other application aside from your GPA. And so again, off the top of my head, I know that 2.8 is the GPA requirement for applying to St. Paul College. It's 2.9 for Metro State, maybe 3.0 for uh, Concordia University, uh, which is south of us. So I would say it's different for every school. Go to those websites that you're interested in. Um, who it's for, again, it might be somebody that really specifically wants to get in some math or sciences that we might not be able to offer here. Um, certainly students have gotten into a lot of really cool liberal arts, um, you know, like women's studies. I've seen a lot of students take those types of classes at the University of Minnesota. Um, many students that want to pursue foreign languages have gone to the University of Minnesota to take French and German and Polish and a whole host of other languages. Um, there's some, you know, like specific arts, whether it's um, metal arts comes to mind, but there's automotive, there's a lot of things, wood shop, things that Great River doesn't have the size or capacity for that students have been taking at St. Paul College. Um, and it's certainly a college environment. Uh, it feels a lot different than being a student at Great River School, uh, especially if you've been here for a long time and you're used to having everybody in the building knowing you for multiple years. Um, you're going in. There's going to be other PSEO students in your class, but for the most part, these are um, college students and in many cases, community college students. So it's, you know, 18 to whatever age uh, up. And so much more onus on the students for executive functioning and self-advocacy, reaching out to the teacher for support, things like that. Um, here's a place that I will say, again, it's probably most common that students take one or two PSEO classes and still probably spend more than half of their time here at Great River School, in which case, you know, we still plug them into indie work periods. And so that they might have one or two of those and again, might come back here and not necessarily get help from our guides, but get help from, um, you know, all of our support personnel here from an executive functioning standpoint. And just to use this as like a good learning environment rather than being, you know, on campus or at the library or at a coffee shop. Myths about PSEO. Um, what it does with regard to college, whether it's easy admissions or credit transfer, things like that. Um, the thing that I will always say is there's four or 5,000 colleges and universities in the United States, and I can't ever get make any guarantee for any of them about what, whether it is a Great River credit or a PSEO credit is going to transition into. And so I would say just don't bank on that. There are some instances where you know that, again, I'll say uh, you live out in White Bear Lake and you want to go to the Century College after you graduate and you're fully committed to that plan and you start doing PSEO there and you're following a track, uh, whether it's a credential or an associate's degree. Uh, yeah, very high likelihood that um, at a community college, like admissions is guaranteed with a uh, high school diploma, but that those credits would transfer. Uh, I was meeting with a family a couple of weeks ago that was interested in, I think, Mankato State, but knew the program or had done research enough to know that their affiliation with Metro State probably provided a pretty good transfer of credits from Metro State to Mankato State. Um, so I don't wanna say that it's not possible, um, but it's not a guarantee in most cases. And that's not usually what students are looking for when they're looking to pursue PSEO. Uh, and then again, like what is it gonna account for? Um, it can count for a whole host of things. Um, so generally speaking, um, what I would say the guidance is, is that taking PSEO, whether one class or two full-time years, is often not a guarantee that you're going to save money uh, in college or necessarily graduate early. But I think a lot of statistics say that you will have your general credits out of the way and you often are able to take more upper level classes and or have more dual degrees. So, you know, maybe two majors, multiple minors. Again, there's the possibility for graduating early, but that's not usually the most likely outcome. 
again, my advice is often to say, this is your high school experience. Um, let your college experience be what that's going to be. Make your decisions about IB, non-IB, PSEO based on, you know, the, the kind of educational experience you want to have while you're a student here. Um, so if you're enjoying being at Great River and don't want to leave the community, like, don't go off to PSEO. Um, go off to college after you graduate. So that's often my advice. I'll also say I've almost always had a student that does PSEO like it and continue to do it. I would say they I almost always say it's not exactly what they thought it would be. A lot of times they're thinking they're going to get a specific class and it isn't available or they don't get to register first and it was full or it wasn't offered at the right time, things like that. And they don't have the ex exact experience or the class that they were expecting, uh, but they still like the experience and it's something they continued and usually pursued PSEO full-time or part-time until they graduate. Um, I think I spoke to the lowering the cost of the college degree. Um, there's a point here about uh, connections with teachers for letters of recommendation, right? So I think often you're looking at two to three letters of recommendation uh, as you're planning to apply to colleges in most cases. And so again, working with the teachers here that have known you for, you know, one to multiple years, certainly more than one semester means you've got a more robust letter of recommendation coming uh, from a Great River Guide necessarily compared to a, um, a PSEO teacher who, again, could be teaching a 10-person class, could be teaching a 200-student lecture, lecture hall that might not know you at all. And of course, the community support. Um, at the same time, I want to underline the fact that you're still a Great River student, and there's lots of kids that say, like, I want to have a connection to my community. Um, so they come back for community meetings, they come back for other events, they come back for extracurriculars, sports, musicals, robotics, things like that. Um, also worth noting here that, again, if you're a, a full-time PSEO student and you never take any of your credits at Great River again, there's still two graduation requirements to consider. One is the CAS, the Creativity Action Service requirement. Uh, generally, PSEO students work with me to make sure that that is fulfilled. Um, that's done on a pretty flexible basis over the course of the semester, but it's also true that we have key experiences. So often uh, the for the juniors, the North Star Quest in the fall, and for seniors, the canoe trip, and then spring intensives usually happen after the college semester is over. So I've got a letter that, that speaks to the fact that it's a graduation requirement. Oftentimes a PSEO student might miss the first or the last day of a key experience, maybe miss one of the two classes of the week uh, at PSEO, but still join their classmates on the key experience. Um, probably spoke to most of this. Again, um, some of the only programs that don't have PSEO in the Twin Cities, Augsburg doesn't have a program and McAllister doesn't have a program are the two that come to mind. It's been a long time since we've had students at St. Thomas and St. Kate's, but we've had students there. Um, requirements we've talked about, meeting with a counselor, that's me. It's probably a 20 minute meeting and we'll just make sure that you're hitting the right deadline application materials and I'll get the forms filled out for you. Uh, in terms of um, process then, uh, I would say, again, if the application is due on May 15th, you get everything in. They might let you know within a week or two that you're accepted, it might be another month. Um, it's very common for a student to reach out to me in the middle of summer break in July and say like, I just got in, I get to enroll in a week, uh, can we build a schedule? And so my answer is always yes, whether you do that for fall semester in July or um, spring semester is often in December that you're scheduling. But I would say, take a look at the PSEO schedule, classes and credits that you're thinking about taking, work with me to see how that would line up with both classes you might be taking at Great River. Uh, as well as, you know, which credits you need to be on track for graduation. So it's a kind of a meeting that needs to happen at least twice a year with me. Spoken to this one quite a bit. Uh, again, it's really competitive. Most programs, I think you have a pretty good shot of admissions. If you were a junior applying to the Univers University of Minnesota, it's less than 50-50. Um, but they have a preference and lower GPA requirements for seniors than juniors. So I've had not as much recently, but in the past, students do PSEO at one program as a junior and then uh, transition to the University of Minnesota as a senior. Um, I mean, that's also true that you can kind of like hop around from program to program and do PSEO at different schools. Never had a student that did that strategically. Um, 
And then again, I might point out a couple, you know, uh, other programs like MCAD, just the College of Art and Design over at the MIA campus in Minneapolis. Uh, lots of students pursuing specific art classes there. And then Dun Dunwoody, kind of vocational technical trades. Uh, and we've had students, I think, currently that are taking some classes there. FAQ are funds for transportation available to help students attend courses on college campuses via the PSEO program. Short answer is yes. And for the most part, that often looks like bus passes. And so for a lot of students, um, again, the 3B taking that either east or west over to St. Paul College um, is the easiest way to get there. And you can use the same bus cards that Great River students use to get here. Uh, school districts provide information to families and students about PSEO. Yes, this is what we're doing here. I think there's some links on our website. And again, I'm the point person helping you with this. It's a pretty fast process. Um, the most important part is just knowing the registration deadlines and dates to be considering. Can students take online classes through PSEO? Yeah, uh, was really uncommon before COVID. During COVID and right after COVID, it felt like almost everybody taking PSEO was taking online classes. Feels like that scaled back a lot. Um, I don't know that I have too many students taking PSEO right now that are doing it online, but I will say it kind of ups the flexibility for you to be able to take PSEO classes and still take the Great River classes that you want to take regardless of like any scheduled conflicts. Um, and then school districts providing online PSEO students with computer and internet access. Yes, um, that's, uh, you know, the Chromebooks are new to us on a one-to-one -one basis for the high school this year. So that would be the way to access that. And then again, in terms of internet access, I would say most students do come on campus, both for the Great River classes and for IndieWork, which of course includes internet access. So uh, Great River in general, here to answer questions, me specifically for PSEO. Um, transcripts you can get from a couple places, but I signed all of the PSEO forms so I can get you the transcript as well. And then help you make good decisions uh, along with Teresa, the college counselor, uh, Lindsay talking about all things IB. I'm happy to have all of these folks and your advisors and guides give you guidance on what you might wanna do. Thanks, Matt. I'm just watching the Q&A and I don't see any questions for uh, folks out there that have PSEO specific questions. Our next segment is going to be devoted to the IB pathways at Great River School. So I'm just giving folks a chance out there to submit any questions that might be PSEO specific. We'll see if any will in. And if not, we are going to transition to IB Info Night. Uh, so I do see a raised hand out there. We do have a Q&A button, I hope, on the bottom of the screen that you can submit Q&A to. And so we might have one question coming in through the Q&A. All right, while we're waiting, I will say uh, that's exactly as long as most of my other PSEO meetings. And whenever I ask for questions, there's almost never a question. So this is like on par. I don't think anybody's being shy tonight. If we're not interested in IB, can we head out? Absolutely. The rest of the uh, presentation is uh, about the 11th and grade, 12th grade IB for all program at Great River School that all of our 11th and 12th graders are enrolled in. And so uh, IB is the rest of the evening. Can 10th graders still take PSEO? It was mentioned that 10th graders were scarcely enrolled. So like if there's a ninth grade family interested in uh, potentially having their 10th grader in PSEO, Matt, uh, is that possible or no? Uh, I would say if it's a strong interest, let's schedule a meeting. Uh, I know that it's not the same access at all schools. Um, so depending on like your transportation plans um, and what your interest is, I'm happy to help you research it, but know that it's it's pretty limited and it's not all schools. And so um, happy to meet more and talk about it. What do semester transitions look like for PSEO like lining up with the Great River School semester schedules? Do they line up nicely? What have you found as an experience, Matt, with yeah. those lines? 
I don't know if that came in from Q&A or from you, Lindsay, but that's a great question and it rarely gets asked and I don't always speak about it uh, when I'm in the middle of the summer. Um, it depends on the program. So some PSEO programs can start surprisingly early. So you might be going like up to two weeks before Labor Day um, with PSEO. That can tend to mean that you are, well, with most PSEO programs, you're done uh, by mid-December. And so you've got kind of more a college style winter break. Um, some PSEO programs will start back up before the midpoint of January, uh, but I would say it's pretty common for January 15th to January 20th, semester two to start. And so it is true that there's often a one to three week overlap where you are a semester two PSEO student and a semester one Great River student. And um, sometimes the schedule will just overlap. And I would tend to say we would try to work with both the PSEO teachers and the Great River teachers to say like attendance can't be 100%, but do everything you can to make sure you're getting all the work in. So it can be a bit of a problem, um, but it usually only lasts about two weeks. Again, uh, PSEO spring semester often ends May 10th. And so um, depending on whether or not you're taking Great River classes, there can be kind of a gap between that and like spring intensives the first week of June. Matt, we appreciate you. Thank you for sharing PSEO with us. And we can switch to the IB portion of the evening now that folks know uh, to reach out to you if they have any more, any further questions. All right. Have a good night. Thanks.